St Francis Hospice is a celebration of what people in Haverhill, Brentwood, Barking and Dagenham, Redbridge and West Essex have achieved for local people facing the most difficult time in their lives. We'd like to share our story of how St Francis Hospice began and how it became one of this country's most respected centres providing palliative and end-of-life care all thanks to the determination and dedication of so many incredible people in our community. In 1975, specialist care for people who were dying or in need of end-of-life care didn't exist. The time was ripe for a change and the modern hospice movement was growing fast. Fundraising for St Francis Hospice started with three £5 notes donated by Joan Matthews, Peter Smith and Dr Dorothy Rule who were the founder members of the Hospice Project. In 1978, the hall, an imposing 19th century mansion in Haverhill Atty Bower, was identified as a suitable site for the hospice. And thanks to many tireless fundraising from so many dedicated local people, the hall was purchased in 1978. The very first St Francis Hospice charity shop was opened in 1981. We now have 15 shops in our local areas raising vital income to fund our services. On the 6th of January 1984, the keys were handed to the Council of Management and the first person to be cared for on our ward was Mr George Smith from Rittle. In the first 12 months we cared for 208 people, 123 women and 85 men whose ages ranged from 12 to 94 years. The hospice put a holistic approach into daily practice as the care team looked after every aspect of a person's needs. The late Prince Philip, the Duke of Edinburgh, made a private visit to St Francis Hospice in 1985 and met with people on the ward and their loved ones. In April 1985, work began on a home care service with two nurses. There was a big demand for their work, with 28 community home visits made in the first month alone. An occupational therapy service was introduced that same year and the bereavement service began in 1986, offering counselling to adults and children for as long as they needed us. With demand for community nursing ever increasing, in 2000 we were able to offer a hospice at home service, which gave people the option to be supported at the end of their life in their own homes, with their family and with a team of compassionate professionals around them. In 2014, the crisis support team was launched, to enhance the care and support we provide to local people and professionals needing an urgent response. Orange Line launched in 2016, a fantastic new confidential telephone service for local people who are bereaved or feeling isolated or lonely. The service is available Monday to Friday from 9am to 5pm. We introduced a day service in 1988 and in 1993, we opened Pemberton Place, a new dedicated space for people under our care to come along and socialise and take part in activities and therapies. In 2008, we opened our Pepperell Education Centre, expanding the reach of our expertise by providing specialist training courses and study days to medical teams across the country. The COVID-19 pandemic in March 2020 brought challenges we had never seen before. We were immensely proud that our hospice doors stayed open to keep loved ones connected. We were determined to adapt our services and care so we could continue to provide the holistic care safely. Dad was diagnosed with bowel cancer um, in 2007. He was here for three weeks and just had the most amazing uh, treatment. But then once he was here, it was, it was the care he received was just amazing. Just coming into here, like everyone is just so warm and so friendly and so bubbly that it really does make such a difficult time, just, as I say, so, so kind of comforting. We felt safe here. Everything else around us was chaotic and we had no idea where the future was, but the hospice was the safe anchored point 
that kept us really grounded and has continued to do so. At times you don't want to be Wendy with cancer. You don't want to be the patient. You just want to be yourself. And there were times that here, she could just be Wendy. I was really well looked after. Um, all, all, they sorted out all my medication for me. Um, nothing was too much trouble. Yeah, it's quite th therapeutic and it, it's, it is good because I know there's always somebody I can talk to. Dr Corinna was really heavily involved. Um, she would come to the house quite often, give us emotional support, practical support about what to expect and just be there as a port of call. We always knew we just had a number to call and we could call straight away and we would get help. Rhea was never really uncomfortable at any point. Mm -hmm. um, so that was, that was really great, that service. Um, yeah, it was all these different areas that came together mm. in the end to meet, make Maria have a, a really comfortable um, end of her life. You cared for my granddad at the hospice um, because he had cancer and um, he needed somewhere to stay, so he came to stay here so they could help him. They helped me with counselling and handling my emotions after he died. With um, Pete, he helped me talk about it and react differently. I actually had counselling here um, for 18 months. Every Monday afternoon I would come here. It was like clockwork. I used to have counselling, then have lunch and then go home. It was like clockwork. And even though it started off with the healing of the loss of grandma, it opened up a lot of childhood trauma, which I had to deal with. And I think I left after those 18 months when I was officially, you know, it, when, it, when it was over, I actually left as a better person, a stronger person a more confident person. The, the most important thing, thank you. Yeah, thank you. And of course, we could not have done any of this without your creative and inspiring fundraising. From summer fairs, record-breaking challenges, mud runs, glitzy balls, memory walks, skiing challenges, fun runs, to recycle your Christmas trees, coffee mornings, and Go Orange Days, you have been amazing supporters, each and every one of you. We thank you. Our nurses thank you. And those who use our services, thank you. Volunteers are at the heart of our hospice. These special people give us precious gifts of their skills and their time completely for free. Our amazing volunteers provide support from night hours on the ward to working in our gardens, shops, fundraising events, and in our offices. We simply couldn't do it without them. The hospice has been on an incredible journey over the past 40 years and achieved so much. Thousands of people have received expert care and support and our mission to provide local people with excellent palliative and end of life care and support before, during and after death will never change. Thanks to you, we've been able to support thousands of people through the hardest times of their lives. And with your continued support, we will support thousands more. Thank you. 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 From the bottom of my heart.